Camera ready? <coughs> Camera ready. Actor <coughs> ready? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Angel Hoyos, and I'm the manager in NH Hotels in Spain. Today we're going to talk about the, some, some challenges that I found in my, my hotel chain and age. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you some basic data on the hotel industry in Spain. Later we're going to talk about those challenges. And finally, we're going to have a little discussion because I also want you to participate and to take a part in my presentation. Well, first of all, as I said, uh, basic data of the hotel industry in Spain. Later, some challenges I found and a little discussion. Well, first of all, um, you know, the economy is divided in three main sectors. The primary sector, the secondary, and the tertiary sector. The first one is mainly related to the agriculture. The second one is about the, um, the manufacturing and the industry. And the tertiary sector is the service sector. Here we find the tourism, which is very important in around the world. But in Spain, it plays a very important role. Why? Because tourism contributes to the 11% of the Spanish GDP and it creates a 12% of the employment in Spain. Uh, tourism in 2014, those are data obtained from the statistical uh, Spanish office. Uh, tourism got 45 million euros in, uh, coming from 60 million people. And we had uh, 286 million net stays, divided in almost 15,000 hotels and accommodations in Spain which make a total amount of almost 1 million and a half rooms available for our customers. The occupation rate in Spain in 2014 was of 53%. And well, <clears throat> now these are the main challenges I found that we have to face and we have to look for a solution to them. Those are the economic crisis, the uh, existence of, of unfair competition, the difficulties to get loyalty from customers, and the flexibility when adapting to new cultures. Well, now I'm going to explain them. If you have any questions, don't you hesitate to, to stop me and ask me whatever. Well, the economic crisis in Spain started in 2008, and we're going to talk about the period from 2008 until 2014. Well, the unemployment rate uh, currently is of 25% uh, in Spain. It's quite a, a high rate. Um, what ha how has it affected uh, in Spain? Well. There is a less foreign demand and there is much offer, so the occupation rate is 53%, as I already said, and it should be higher. So we're going to look for some alternatives and some, some solutions so that we try to, to increase that rate. In 2012, N8 Hotels had a loss of money of almost uh, 12.6 million euros, and we tried to compensate those losses um, by obtaining more demand. So we try to decrease our prices, uh, the prices of our five-star hotels, decrease the prices up to 12.4%, and our four-star and three-star hotels decrease the prices up to 6.8 and 6.4%, uh, respectively. Well, some measures that I've, I consider as a manager that will be very useful are instead of increasing our prices or decreasing them, increasing them to have a higher uh, profit margin or decreasing them to increase our demand, we're trying to uh, keep our prices constant and just changing them depending on the CPI. What is the CPI? The CPI is the Consumer Price Index. Uh, so it's kind of the average value of life. So if prices increase due to inflation, we're going to increase our prices in the same proportion. And if they decrease, we're going to do exactly the same. We also have tried to avoid dismissal because we think uh, also about our workers and we think they're not, it's not fair for them to lose their jobs just because of the crisis, because the crisis is affecting everyone and they shouldn't lose their jobs. So we're trying to, um, for example, if we have in a certain hotel four people working in the reception, 10 hours per day, instead of dismissing two of them, we are only going to divide their work time and instead of working 10 hours per day, they're only going to work five hours per day and we're gonna keep all of them. And the other remaining hours, for example, they can use them in our training programs that we are offering for our workers, or they can use them to, to go to another job or whatever to get more money and try to recover also their effects from the crisis. We also want to attract foreign investments. For example, as I said, we had a, a, high, a very huge loss of money in 2012. 
So we're trying to recover those losses through, through uh, foreign investments, as we did in, in 2012, with the Chinese group H and N. They bought the 20% of the shares of NH, and with that money we could recover and compensate the losses in 2012, or also keep on investing to get more money. So it was a very good agreement. We also try, are trying to diversify risk. Because we, uh, as you know, the crisis. I'm talking all the time about Spain. Remember, uh, the crisis in Spain affected very in a very direct way to hotels and everything. So we think that instead of having all the uh, all our hotels in Spain or in that area of Europe, we think that we should diversify so that if something happened, didn't didn't affect that direct way to all our hotels. So here you have all the location of all the locations of our current hotels. We are located mainly. <coughs> in, in uh, almost all the territory in Europe, but we are also located in, in North, Central, and South America, and we are also located in South Africa. We're trying to, to move also through other continents and other parts of the world, but I think currently we are very good located. So this way we can avoid, um, we can diversify risk, as I said. <coughs> well, the first, um, another um, challenge that I found is the unfair competition. <coughs> Sorry, um, I don't know if you know this kind of platforms, Airbnb. It's a platform that, that is offering um, accommodations like um, private houses or whatever at a lower price than a hotel does. So more, um, a lot of people is choosing these alternatives instead of going to a hotel. So it's, um, it's very bad for the economy because as, as I said at the beginning, Tourism in Spain is very important. It contributes to the GDP and creates a lot of jobs. If everyone went to those alternatives, uh, the economy would be even worse because there will not be that um, that contribution to the economy, and uh, it's contributed into a black economy because it's not regulated. Uh, they don't pay any any kind of taxes or whatever. So I think they should try to stop this or at least try to change it. Um, and what does it make is that there is less demand of hotel rooms, so it's very bad for us, for our industry. Well, so that you understand more the different prices, I just look for two different accommodations in Spain. It's, it's located in the center, both are located in the center of Madrid. This is a hotel, a two-star hotel, and this is a private um, accommodation from the web-based Airbnb. So I look for an accommodation for four different people from January 23rd to January 13th. So the different prices were um, from 4 and 7, uh, 470 euros to 720. There is a difference of 250 euros. So it makes a lot of people just seriously think about, is it worth paying for a hotel? Or should I just go to this accommodation which is gonna give me everything I really need if I just wanna sleep or something. So this is something to think about and what are we going to do? Well, when you go to those accommodations, instead of going to a hotel, you are only renting the accommodation. You are not renting any type of service or whatever <coughs> shopping else. So I think that the best thing we can do is just focusing on our services, trying to give the best of us, because as, as I said, we are not only offering services, we are um, accommodation, we are all also offering uh, very huge uh, range of services, extra services, like cleaning services, restaurant, uh, some activities we prefer, leisure activities, we have uh, sport courts and many other things that I think that make um, this stay in a hotel, in our hotel, not only a stay but also a unique experience. So I think we should focus and give our best as in giving the best uh, experience for you uh, as, a customer, as customers. So, well. Another challenge I found in our NA um, hotel chain is that there is a huge difficulty to get loyalty from customers. Why? Because customers are more and more demanding. They want every time more and more you know your customers and you every time you go to a hotel you're looking for extra services that all other hotels don't offer or you look for the internet, for example in TripAdvisor, you look for alternatives, you look for um, the description of, of a hotel or whatever and you're looking for the best one at a lower price. So it's very difficult for us also to reach all your expectations. <coughs> so well, we have to do something to get it. And also as, as customers coming, for example, to, to Madrid, they're looking for a different experience, 
Pero uh, they're looking for fun or I don't know, depending on why you're going to our hotel. And um, they're looking for different destinations every time. They don't want to repeat the experience. Why? Because they think they're gonna be bored or they've already seen everything. So they're looking for different thematics. Uh, and also, as um, I said, due to the crisis and everything, people are looking for the best option in economic terms. They're looking for um, cheaper alternatives. Now, taking into account the black economy, <laughs> as I said, it's out of here. Well, so we are gonna add um, to get customer loyalty. Uh, we are very present in, in, in social networks because we want customers to repeat the experience. We don't want them just to go to our hotel and later leave. We also we want them to uh, to go to the web page or I don't know, just type whatever they felt or something because this way it's gonna be good for other customers and also for us. Because we if we have done something wrong, we can improve it. Or if I we've done something right, we it's like they recognize our work. So uh, we are very present here. If they have any doubt or whatever, we can answer them through uh, web pages and social networks such as Twitter, uh, Foursquare. Foursquare is a geolocalization web um, social network. I don't know if you know, it's very useful for hotels and for services. Um, we are also on Facebook, on Instagram, many social networks. Uh, also, we have our own personalized loyalty program with different cards depending on how how <coughs> many nice uh, overnight stays you've been in our hotels. You're gonna get the blue cards in the color platinum one. So here you've got a personalized loyalty program where you can get from Terra discounts lower or higher. You can also <coughs> you have also. Uh, many advantages such as uh, high high speed Wi-Fi in our hotels or early check in, late check out after 4 p.m., which is really useful for most people who are coming here to mediums or or just leisure. And we also want to create an unique experience because this way we think customers want to come back. Because as I said, they want to change the destination, but if we create a unique a unique um, experience and we change it. With the time, because um, if we have every time the same, they, they won't want to come back again because they've already seen everything in our hotel. So we're trying to get to all the different things year to year or period. Um, in some periods of time, just change it in and so that there is a different experience. And for example, we have here a special hotel in Madrid. This is the Silk and Puerta de Europa, uh, Puerta de America. Sorry, it's located in, in, in the center of Madrid. And it's a very special hotel because it has uh, 11 floors and the 12th floor is a restaurant. And each floor is, is uh, designed by a different um, uh, a different designer. And these designers are very famous in the art environment and fashion environment. For example, there is a floor uh, designed by Victor Lucchino, uh, others by Hugo, I don't know, there are many, many different designers. So every time you go to this hotel, you're going to see something different, even though they're not changing it. Continuously, it's already different and has different floors, and I think it's quite interesting to go there and feel different every time you go. <coughs> Another challenge I found here is the flexibility when adapting to new cultures. Well, every culture is different, have different habits or language or thing, ways to think, ways to behave or something. So I think to, that uh, if, for example, to our hotel, a person, a person, a customer comes and he's not understood, he's gonna feel so bad because it's like, oh, they didn't understand me, what am I doing here if they're not even able to talk to me or to, to know what I really need. So we think that here, the best thing we can do is have the staff trained so that they understand the language, the culture and everything, not only, for example, coming somebody to our hotel and being able to answer them, but if they ask for something, we don't also have to know how to ask them. But if they are asking for something, we have to understand why they're asking for it, why they need it, or why we didn't have it before or something. We have to be absolutely adapted to them. We have to be a dynamic hotel in terms not only of language or culture, but we have to be adapted to the predominant culture because no hotel can be adapted to the whole cultures around the world. We have to be adapted to the predominant one. For example, we have hotels in, in in Mallorca, and there we are adapted obviously to the German people because most um, customers there are from Germany, from the United Kingdom. So, for example, these girls 
related to, to the breakfast, to the dinner, to the lunch, and so on, are, are adapted to you, to, to German uh, customers. And we have also to make the customers understand that they can learn something from other cultures, not only their culture is the predominant one in kind of way. So, do you have any question? Is everything clear? Wow. <laughs> okay. So now I have some, some questions for you. I, I need your help. I want you to help me. So, well, do you think how the business sector should end with unfair competition? Kike, what do you think? <laughs> do you think we should end? We should end with a good competition. Uh, any sector of any kind of work or something like that should end with an unfair competition. And how can we do? I don't know, to be honest and to be clear with your I don't know, your proposition and your attitude or something like that, I don't know. I'll just play the thing. I hope the environment, but I don't know. Okay, I thank you. I don't really understand that. <laughs> there is, how are you here? <coughs> yeah. You know that there is a lot of unfair competition, such as Airbnb. Yeah. They're offering the services like ours, not like ours, but you understand. And um, at a lower price, so most of our customers or target market are choosing those alternatives instead of our hotels. Yeah. So do you think that we should end, like finish, eliminate? What do you mean we should end? Can't uh -huh. eliminate. <laughs> Erase from the lock, from the lock. <laughs> Just kill the other competition. <laughs> Okay, think about it. <laughs> I think unfair competition, I think uh, competition is never unfair because mm -hmm. a competition is a competition and competition is healthy for every business and every sector, every industry. So if there's no competition, the quality of other businesses would suffer. I mean, I would say if there's not this, um, how do you call it, RB and whatever, Airbnb, Airbnb. Airbnb yeah. um, then the quality of your business would suffer because you don't have to be that good as you are now. And I think actually everyone is, can um, be positive affected by, by yeah, from competition and unfair, I don't know. I mean, of course it's hard, it makes the business hard, and, um, but as you say, you figure out what's, what makes you special Mm -hmm. And so you won already, I think. People who are looking <laughs> for that can easily, or you just adopt another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. I'm gonna hire you. <laughs> <laughs> but Two. furthermore, I think it's not possible um, from the hotel business to end the competition because it's a democracy in, every, in the free market, so it's, it's difficult to, to take decisions to end it. Mm. Yes, and you still have a lot more right. than it's Airbnb. It's very difficult to, mm. to end with them, but it's the idea of the should be. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think the hotel sector, as you say, can uh, end with this unfair competition. Can or can't? Can. Because uh, you can't control it sometimes. And uh, I wanted to say also. Um, yeah, just the only thing we can do is to make it more attractive, the hotel sector. Mm -hmm. To make more uh, difference between uh, the competition and the hotel sector. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, anyone else want to add something? <coughs> um, which other ways do you think that there are to overcome the economic crisis? to try to find against it. Economic crisis in the hotel sector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm working for NH, so if you can help. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. 
we make it more attractive. <laughs> Attractiveness is always a solution. <laughs> but you survived the economic crisis already, you not? I mean, it's already yes. better, it's already growing. Yes. So actually, it's um, you presented some ways how you did it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for <laughs> other alternative ways. Okay, you know other opportunities or other. Okay. Okay, okay let's go to the next. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if the Spanish cannot afford to travel because of economic crisis, how about getting foreigners? Chinese, because oh, they Chinese, always can. Chinese, Germans are always good at traveling. <laughs> no. But I mean, if they bought already part of the company <laughs> and they are partners, 20%, right? Mm -hmm. So actually they have maybe some influences in the, and they can, I mean, they have a huge um, uh, tourism industry or a lot of people traveling to um, international countries like yeah, <coughs> other <coughs> continents. So actually that could be a business like hotels can more focus on Chinese. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Stephen, you know other alternative ways to go against crisis? The only easy way I can think of is focus on different markets. On this way? Focus on different markets, mm -hmm. different source markets, be it China, be it Germany. Um, cost cutting, uh, okay, doesn't really help. You know, you can cut your cost, but you need customers to pay for your cost. So, but there's another idea. Thank you. Uh, I think that in, in Spain or our, our, uh, point of view, at least, that if we can go to other countries, we are going. Uh, on holiday, but here, I mean, uh, yes, in Spain. So the money that we don't spend outside, we spend it inside of the, of the country. So in my opinion, I feel like, yeah, we have our rights and we have all that, we've heard about it so much, but um, the money that we, we would have spent outside, it's still inside, mm -hmm. in our photos, in our brands, or in our, I don't know, structures, or something like that. So actually, it's <laughs> so you mean about investing inside of our country instead of going outside and spending money outside? You mean staying in Spain and spending it there so that it can yeah, instead of when, uh, instead of investing a thousand euro in I don't know going to Turkey yeah. to a four star hotel or whatever, you are going to spend five hundred and you are going to a rural or a nature uh, area two hundred away from your city or your town. Good, thank you. <laughs> it's a good way. Somebody else? Okay. Um, how would you get loyalty from your customers? What are the ways to get you that you are there? Um, loyalty from investing from. Sorry? Loyalty programs. Mm -hmm. I think you told me. Yes, we had. Right um, like the real hotels have. You think it's working? I think so, yeah. Yeah, me too. And if you offer a good quality, mm -hmm. normally customers come back. If you offer a good quality and a good standard, and if you fulfill the wishes of the customers, they come back. And for example, um, if you have um, regular customers, um, you can do some special. Yeah, you can you can add some 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 value, added value for them. For example, it's their first time in the hotel, and you offer them, for example, the dinner for free, or you decorate the room because it's their um, first time marriage day, and you know, yes. and the wedding day. Yeah, yeah the wedding day, and then you. That you show the customer you are important to me. And you are involved, you have a relation with them. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what we want to get with our loyalty program. Like they feel kind of special every time they yeah. come. It's, it's good. Yeah. Special offer. Thank you. Special services. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, maybe special <laughs> offers, let's say, um, services, mm -hmm. um, discounts. 
That's why we are open with our loyalty program. Especially for its customer, depending on the nights they stay at. In our hotels, they stay here. Um, the last question. Will you, really tell me the truth, will you contribute to the black economy or will you pay a higher price for our hotel? Black economy. <laughs> <laughs> you just recorded that. Sorry. Right now I will contribute to the black economy because I'm a student. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have a micro economy. But maybe in my uh, employment life, <coughs> I will pay for hotel. Yeah. You sure? You yeah. pay for a hotel? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have resources. So. <laughs> I think it depends a bit because if I, if I know I have certain services in the hotel and if I'm there to see a lot and I don't want to spend time with searching for places to eat and things, I would book the hotel and have breakfast included maybe or something and then it's easier for me. And if I'm working for a place to stay with a lot of people and I know I will spend a lot of time in my room and co with cooking and things, it's something different than I would mm. actually support the black economy. <laughs> <laughs> As <Yeah>. I <laughs> In a certain way, you know, I'm working for an agent and not support black economy. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, depending on the type of travel, how you want to travel, personally, you have to decide. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think that one customer will always go this or that way. So I think um, it's not really you know, unfair competition, referring to the first question. And I would personally, for example, I, I used couch surfing when I was backpacking in Australia, but now I would say, oh no, thank you, not again. But I think it's always depending on the situation, on your age, on the travel motives, and you as a hotel then have to, yeah, to um, show the customers what the benefits are um, in your target group so that they, when they are in the situation of looking for a hotel, choose you. So I don't think that we can say, always go to hotels or always go it's more and more big stuff and you're like the smart shopping um, customer that always chooses the best for the situation mm -hmm. you're right but when i say that it's not for competition is because they don't contribute to the economy they don't pay any type any type of taxes it's not regulated by law i don't know here in germany at least in spain it's not regulated they don't for example, in Barcelona, there is a law that says that every accommodation has to pay, I don't know, the percentage, I think, 6% of the United States what it costs. And this, web, this kind of platforms don't pay for it, so it's already been sued by the, the whole of Barcelona. So it's kind of unfair competition because they don't, um, they don't meet the requirements by law. They don't pay taxes, it's not regulated. So that's why I mean, yes, I say I'm for Anyway, thank you for your contribution. Okay, you know our, our alternative solutions for those challenges? Mm. I have a question. If you think that, I mean, okay, that would be black economy, economy and um, maybe not a fair way because they don't pay taxes, mm -hmm. But you could just do it a better way, right? You could have a room for a group to stay, to offer the same product for the same price, but pay taxes. Sorry, as a, I, don't I mean, just um, it would be possible for a hotel to have a, like a project to have flats like that to, mm -hmm. to to rent in the city center for similar prices, but legal, and then you can do marketing and. With that, because you know you do it in the right way. Yes, but if you think about it, really, it, I think it wouldn't be be worth it for hotels. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you can get the customers who were going to other parts, mm -hmm. to other accommodations. But if you have you have to offer the same mm -hmm. in a kind of way, but at a lower margin profit, mm -hmm. at a lower price, because you have to pay taxes, location, everything. You no, know, it's different because they don't have to pay. 
for those requirements or those cleaning service services that a hotel is offering or extra services. Even though it's very simple, a very simple accommodation, they have to pay taxes for I don't know for staying there, uh, for being a service, or I don't know depending on the city the, the, the amount of taxes. I, I'm not sure, but uh, it wouldn't be for example for 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 our hotel chain we wouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> Could you do me a favor and go back to the slide where you compared the prices mm -hmm. of the apartment and the hotel? There. So the left hand side is the apartment, private rent, privately owned usually, privately rented through, is this Airbnb that you're checking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Airbnb, those of you shouldn't know it, is kind of bringing together people who have an apartment, whether they live there or not doesn't really make a difference, people that usually privately rent a room or the whole apartment to foreigners for pay. Um, so that's left hand side. Right hand side is a two star hotel, Julia, where's Romeo, um, which for four people, that means two rooms, two double rooms, Cost 700 euro, and the other one, the apartment, obviously is way cheaper. And obviously is a higher classification. Hotel is two star, the apartment looks more than I would expect with two stars. Although those apartments are not officially rated. Huh? And you cannot tell much of the difference by the star rating that you see there, because this is customer <coughs> ratings. And Hotel Julia also has eight points out of ten most probably, so they also have muy bien. <laughs> Why is the apartment so much cheaper? Or making it probably simpler, why is the hotel so much more expensive? No tax, no services. Tax, service? Uh, service is, is rendered by? By the yeah, staff. Staff, the yeah. whole personnel, huh? Okay. Very expensive. What else? Maintenance. Hmm? Maintenance is uh, lower. Charging the spa or whatever no facilities. Hotel usually has, um, depending on the size of the hotel and the, the comfort it offers, a hotel usually has plenty of spaces, plenty of offers that it has to have standby so that it, that customers don't use. The famous hotel in uh, Flensburg that I told you about. Uh, they had a sauna, <laughs> which I didn't use. I don't know anyone used it. I don't know. Who, I didn't check. But they had a sauna, and of course they have to include the cost of the of the sauna in the room price. Whether I use it or not, I have to pay it. <coughs> it gets worse the bigger and usually the more luxurious a hotel becomes. If you've got a big spa, swimming pool, whirlpool, big gym, blah 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 blah, all this needs to be paid for. <coughs> Of course, by the room price. And here in the apartment, you don't have it. Probably the owners of the apartment don't really make a calculation of cost and, and profit. Most probably they do not calculate maintenance, which if you do it professionally, you have to do. You have to include the cost for renovation. But if this is done by a private person who says, oh great, I can earn some money, don't really do calculation. Also in the hotel, four people have to book two rooms and mm -hmm. uh, for the apartment, I think there is a fixed price for the whole apartment, not depending on how much people there are. And if there are four people, of course, the price per person is much more. She was too clever in choosing this example mm -hmm. for undermining her case. Huh? But if you compare the cost for two people in this example, or would be, which Option would be better if it's not four people but two people. The hotel, hotel is cheaper right? because hotel is 360 euro for two people. And apartment for two, maybe you get a small reduction, but maybe it's 120 euro. But still, some people then might opt for the apartment, which I think looks quite nice. In this combination or a comparison, between the two-star hotel and the apartment, I still would opt for the apartment, although it's 50, 60, 70 euros more expensive. Mm -hmm. 
probably you wouldn't because your resources are limited. Mine are limited as well, but probably not as limited as yours. <laughs> They are located very close to each other. I chose the same location more mm -hmm. or less for people, the same dates. Somehow, San Francisco and Bella, and it's very close to each other. We can't see here. Probably breakfast is included in the hotel. It doesn't really look no, like it, it is. No, there was nothing. Room one. Yes, okay, very good. <laughs> Sometimes this makes a difference, um, which people don't really think of. If breakfast is included in the hotel price, it looks more expensive. Remains the question, do you want to pay 15, 20 euro for breakfast or not? But here, if you rent the apartment, you need to go shopping. If you are in a hotel, you don't have to do shopping. Yeah. Does anyone have experience? Yeah, I Carol. just was in Costa Rica with Airbnb mm -hmm. and it worked really good. It was great. We lived in a little house from a family and yeah, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Um, I had also experience my family came and they were in an apartment with Vivi and Airbnb, sorry, in uh, this in, right in Holland. Holland. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a building after that building, it was there and it was really nice. I think, can't remember now, but you can't, you could even see the Holland of the Square. So it was. Really, uh, the citizen there um, well, com well uh, communicated with uh, trains, trams, blah blah blah. If you want to go to Hamburg or whatever, so it was a really good experience, and the price was really good. There's no need for tourists in Bremen to go to Hamburg. Bremen is so You wanna do something else, not to say It was a very good experience, actually. That's interesting for me to hear because I don't have experience with Airbnb. A friend of mine sometimes books through Airbnb. Um, for some reason, she is very fond of Airbnb. I know three of her stories and they were all negative. But she is still fond of Airbnb. I am really Well, <laughs> <laughs> probably not really negative, but not, not enthusiastic. the best time. Well, the main reason for her was because it was cheap. It's depending who is renting the, mm -hmm. the apartment, you can't ask for maybe uh, all the schools or my grandma to rent the flat because she would not be agree or she would not uh, trust 100%. You yeah. know? So mm -hmm. I think it's different people who is renting this flat. You should be more open mind and okay, I can get some money if I'm not using it now. And I have you have to trust the people who is going to rent your flat also. So it's like both parties mm -hmm. uh, agreement that there is no agreement between, but it's something that you know in advance. Like, okay, if I go there, I have to respect also the room. Also, when you <coughs> exactly the same if you have the room. So maybe it can contribute to the bad experience. If someone yes. do it only because they need the money or because they just want to get some extra money instead of this. Empty flat. Yeah. Different, different things. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think all of them are bad. <laughs> different entities. Yeah, it's an interesting model because something like this has always happened. Yeah. There have always been people who rented their apartment. Probably not to foreigners, but to friends of the friends of the neighbors, something like this. Mm -hmm. no? Um, but now Airbnb turned this into a business model. I don't know how it works. Airbnb for sure will somehow earn money with it. You pay commission. Yeah, they have commission. Okay. Um, how can they earn money with it if it's not like if the rooms are the providers are not paying taxes? They 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 must be <coughs> up in law system or not? The thing is, it's it's not really, um, it's not real, it's not illegal. But their uh, vermittlungsagentur or not? 
They have an agency. Airbnb like pay taxes. Yeah. Everything is fine with Airbnb. Yeah. And of course, oh, they God. have in their terms and conditions. Um, it's not our fault if those um, people who rent rooms, if they don't follow the law, this is not our fault. We recommend them to follow the law. What they do is their fault. Oh. Airbnb is an agency getting commission, paying taxes on their profits, everything fine. The problem is those people renting their rooms, apartments, houses, whatever, um, the government tax office is not really able to control this. That's why it's probably not a black economy, but at least a gray economy. <laughs> it's, it's very close to professional hospitality business, but um, one other reason why they are cheaper is they don't have to follow all those rules fire extinguishers, um, other safety issues, um, hygiene regulations. In the hotel, if you have a breakfast buffet, you need to follow all those hygiene regulations and you need to have proper, proper um, furniture for a buffet. You just can't put it on a table, it's not allowed. Um, cold cuts need to have a certain maximum temperature, warm plates need to have a certain minimum temperature, blah, blah, blah. You need this plastic cover that people don't spit in the food, etc. <laughs> in a private apartment, That's it. you can do whatever you like. There is no rules for this. So probably this business model is very clever. Um, as many um, business models from the internet, they use areas where there's no laws. Because nobody has ever thought that something like this would be possible. So it's the government's task to create <laughs> laws to take care of this. But then the question remains, who wants to control it? Do we have staff to control all the private apartments? Some of them don't really do it professionally, but they rent their apartment for two weeks a year because they are on holidays themselves. And they offer it for two weeks, it gets booked for five days. Okay, good. It's not really worth controlling those people. They earn whatever, for 500 euros out of it. But there's others who buy apartments only for the purpose of offering them through Airbnb. Which is having Gray market. The market is faster than the law. So we were looking for an alternative solution for any of these challenges. Do you know anything? Yeah, you want to continue to continue. We already talked about the economic crisis, what you can do, unfair competition, unfair competition. What will you do with the adaptation to new cultures? With the adaptation to new cultures, like People coming to our hotel from different cultures, like you don't understand them, it's a problem because it affects directly to our customers. What will you do? Imagine Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a different culture, it's easy to imagine what you're going to do. What do you change in the hotel or to, to adapt to the these guests or mm -hmm. I, mean, what can I, do? I think it's important to have someone knowing the needs of these guests mm -hmm. or the interests for example I know that the Chinese are in general eat super early so if you have if you provide dinner buffet or something you offer it already at 5 for example p.m. and then the Chinese are finished and at 6 30 the Europeans are coming so they don't no, they don't collapse at the buffet and they don't fight and the Europeans are not disturbed by the <laughs> table <laughs> rules or the Chinese dish, I don't know, table, yeah, yeah. whatever, but... Um, eating habits. Yes, eating habits, so, you know, you can, they're always ways to separate the groups somehow, mm -hmm. but it could also be nice... Different to, terms, you mean. Yeah, but so it could also... Be, today, to everyone. Yeah, to, yes, mm -hmm. but maybe it's also nice to find a space where they can find together and realize it's not that bad that they are people from another country. <laughs> Maybe if they have bad habits. 
<laughs> exactly, that's what I said, that they can learn from different uh, cultures, they yes. can learn from others. Yeah, exactly. So maybe there could be some nice things that everyone can try to eat with uh, sticks or something, or yeah. like a Chinese evening, or I don't know. International day, like here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to make it a bit more cultural. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted uh, to say maybe the same that um, yeah, the hotel has certainly to know what target group they have and mm -hmm. from which countries mainly um, people are coming. And if it is China or a culture who is different um, to the to their own culture, um, they have to to know the differences and that's only the um, way to um, let the people. Um, yeah, sometimes it's yeah small things like for example maybe Chinese I also heard that um, they they would never say that something is missing in the room because they think that this would be like the, the person from the hotel would lost her face or his face so they would never say that but they would be like uncomfortable or um, not um, satisfied with the service but you will never know that because they, they will not say it. So sometimes you have to ask Chinese people especially, yeah, are you comfortable with that? Or do you need something like that? Or offer it directly, or I don't know, things like that, small things. Yeah, you have to know the different cultures. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Have I told you the story of the Mediterranean and the German culture on the cruise ships? I don't think so. Um, there's, you know probably Costa Cruises and MSC Cruises. Big ships, international customers, like more or less 50% from Northern Europe and 50% from Mediterranean countries, Spain, Italy, mainly. Um, the problem always is the, the main restaurant. Uh, food board is included, so everyone has like six, seven, eight meals a day, whatever included uh, you've got three and a half thousand four thousand people on board uh, the cruise companies don't want to waste too much space on restaurants because they don't earn money with those restaurants there's some specialty restaurants where people have to pay extra they earn money with shops casino shore excursions bars but not with the restaurants because people have already paid for it so usually they have the main restaurant seats like 50% of the passengers and they do two seatings. So you have an early dinner at 6.30 and a late dinner at 8.30. Which usually is a big problem because either for people 6.30 is too late or 8.30 <coughs> is too early and 8.30 is too late. And then aboard German ships, we only have German customers, it's a big problem. Germans always want to eat at 6.30. You hardly find Germans that want to eat at 8.30. So aboard those international ships, having 50% German, British, and 50% people from the Met, it's no problem. The Germans eat at 6.30 and they are happy, and the people from Spain and Italy, they eat at 8.30 and they are happy. So there, the two cultures perfectly work together <laughs> and, and help the company save a lot of money and a lot of hassle. I worked aboard ships with German customers, it's a mess trying to convince Germans to eat at 8, 8.30. A big dinner of, you know, six, seven courses. They hate it, particularly elderly Germans. So they perfectly work well together. Probably there's ways of finding how Spanish customers and Chinese customers work together. <laughs> Chinese love rice, Spanish love paella. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to ask me something else or you need other information, just contact me. And if you want to work for my company, <laughs> and maybe we can do something together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.